I do think you're going to love this. Uh, it's very interactive course that we put together. Uh, and it's not just being read from a PowerPoint presentation. You'll notice Andy has a unique way of uh, inserting mock drills into this. Uh, he also uses a lot of video footage. And uh, there's a lot of class discussion. And so it makes the training as a whole very interactive and as entertaining as possible. We're impressed, you know? And so, yeah, I had to think about what is it that I could do to, uh, to help people. And this I did for many years. I gave safety training. And I thought, that's what I can do. I can get back into helping people because I really have a passion for it. I feel like, well, that's where my heart is. This is what, this is what got me. Because I've been hurt a couple of times. I've been hospitalized a couple of times from working with chemicals. And uh, I don't want that to happen to you guys. I don't want it to happen to you or the people you work with. I also don't want you, and you'll hear me throughout this whole time, I don't want you to be contaminating and spread contamination throughout your family and stuff. And so you'll hear me really be harping on, on the importance of, of decontamination, of uh, leaving those work clothes at home, you know, taking your boots off, don't, don't get in your vehicles with them because your kids are running around in them. And, and uh, that's, that's really where my heart is. That's where my passion is. I don't want people to get themselves or other people hurt. And that's the big deal. Okay. But I... Uh, oh, she's 91. him turn around and help you. Turn around. Turn around. Yeah. Once you get to below your butt, then just go ahead and sit down. Oh. Classes out there, oxidizers, Lambo solid, Lambo liquids, radioactive. Also, I have number nine here. Number nine? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Number nine <laughs> is miscellaneous. This is what most hazardous waste is shipped under. Also, elevated temperature of the material, that would come under number nine. Number nine is going away with global harmonization. Yeah. We'll talk about the, the history of the, of the regulations. In almost all the regulations, it's got some kind of incident behind it. And it's sad that that's what happens, you know, that we have to wait until something bad happens before we as a government will, will actually act or do something. We've already mentioned Bhopal a couple of times, and that was a big one for us. That was that shook up the chemical industry big time. I remember the day it happened, you know, coming to work and, and hearing about it and seeing it on the news and just, boy, it's a problem. So 
We'll get into medical monitoring. Now, OSHA doesn't call it medical monitoring, but I don't like their term. They call it medical surveillance, and to me, that sounds too sneaky. And so <laughs> I, I just change it. I use it once or twice in my presentation. For the most part, I change it just medical monitoring. It doesn't sound as a little more accurate, actually. We'll talk about PPE use and limitations. Now, I, uh, I use a lot of acronyms, and I'm sorry. I just, over years and years of using these things, I, I can't get away. PPE stands for? Personal, Personal Protective Equipment. And, and in your handouts, I do have kind of a list of what all the different acronyms and stuff that I use here and what they mean. Um, I'll be the same as that. And, and uh, yeah, I got some films here. I'll show you how quickly it can happen. How quickly these things can happen. In fact, on that OSHA website, I'm going to keep talking about that OSHA website. They, uh, all summer long, they showed this one trenching operation where this OSHA inspector was driving by. She says, this is not like me. And he stopped, pulled over, and, and got a guy out of the trench, and minutes later, it caved in, you know? And it most certainly would have killed him, you know? He saved the guy's life by doing that. Yeah. Trenching is one of, the, one of the, another very dangerous things we do around here. Oh my gosh. Here's your subject, <laughs> Bloodborne Baptist, yeah. I got, like I said, I got six sisters. And most of them are nurses. Mm. They work in the medical field. And I got sister-in-laws that, that are nurses. And my mom's a retired RN. And they just, yeah. So the, the medical field is all over the place. And, and I have a couple of uh, grandkids. That, my two granddaughters, older granddaughters, they're in their early 20s now. They, uh, they were working for a hospital, uh, going in and cleaning up and doing uh, kind of janitorial work as far as the hospital. I asked them if they had bloodborne pathogen training, and no, they hadn't. And that was my reaction too. Was, what? How could you not have bloodborne? Do you ever have to clean up um, soiled bed sheets, you know, bandages and stuff? Oh yeah. Along with OSHA and DOT and some other other things, and it's almost daily. I see notices of, of people wanting to hire people that have the 40-hour half bar for training already. Mm -hmm. you know? All over the country, uh, that these these things come from. But yeah, great. it's it's probably a good idea. To get yourself. Uh, this, of course, you have to then you're, you're required then to do the eight hour refresher once a year. Once a year, and um, this, as I said, part of this forty hour. One of the requirements is to do a dress out. Yeah, and so you know. I have seen 40 hours advertised in, in online 40 hour classes. Yeah. And I don't understand how they how they get around this this dress out requirement. In fact, I've seen where OSHA has actually said they they just don't want to certify those. They they will not accept those as uh, as 40 hour training people training they, they haven't had that for. Yeah, it, it'd be tough to do a, a dress out online. With people and stuff, but Actually, we can do it in. We'll have fun. And throughout the week, throughout the week, I will get you up and outside. You know, I don't care how cold it is because <laughs> things happen even in the winter. You know, spills happen in the winter too. And uh, I'll get you out there because I I have a uh, all different. I have a drum that I'll put different places and have you guys go out and and then uh, be able to tell me what you would do, how you would handle this. And, how you would advise the uh, emergency responders on this. Um, on Thursday, I want you just to memorize the answer on these. I truly want you guys to understand this. Remember my goal is to keep you guys safe, keep your family safe. And, and unless you understand this stuff and you're doing hazmat for stuff, that ain't gonna happen. I really do want you guys, that's, that's my primary goal here, is to keep you guys safe. So the way to do that is you go to safetyhelpers.com. From there, you go to our seminar training tab. There you'll see a listing of the available hands-on session classes uh, that you may sign up for. Now, these will be public classes. Hope to see you soon. And uh, anything you want to add, Kyle? That's it, guys. Make That's sure you go guy. to safetyhelpers.com. You can always call us 
any questions, our phone number is toll free, 800-482-4319. Again, thank you for watching and uh, good luck. Thank you.